Drama, pain, suffering. Three things that if you combine, what do you get? Well, the YouTube community. It's, it's a pretty messy place, and today we are going to be going into a situation which is even messier than most things that we've spoken about recently. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a tale of exposés, betrayal, infighting, war, lawsuits, and just, in general, every little bad thing that you can possibly think of in a YouTube drama situation. Just put it all into one big mixer, blend it up, and what do you have? You've got the Illuminati. I, I don't actually know how to pronounce her name correctly. The Illuminati is in the name, but people say Illumina. You've got the Blair situation. But yes, in the last few weeks, a YouTuber who we will be referring to as Blair throughout this video, because I simply cannot speak the English language, has been involved in a lot of controversy. And honestly, this entire thing is absolutely very confusing to me, because at one point of time, Blair, only a month ago, was a very well-respected YouTuber in this community. In fact, I was regularly recommended Blair's videos, but now when you go over to Blair's channel, you can very much see a different story. She is now getting dislike bombed to a, 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 a complete new extent here. I mean, every single video that she's recently uploaded has thousands upon thousands of dislikes, and I am just absolutely confused by this, because to be honest with you, this is the most avoidable situation that I think I've covered in a very long time. Just coming at this from a completely unbiased perspective, I genuinely do not understand how every Everything that we're going to be going through in today's video has kind of unfolded in the way it has. How it all started off with a little squabble on Twitter and just kind of evolved into a snowball effect of mass proportion is genuinely outstanding to me, especially considering the person involved in the situation makes content analyzing situations, expose, somebody who you would think would have actual experience how, how to handle a situation like this, handled it. The absolute worst possible way. It is irony to the absolute maximum, but yes, this is the tale of Illuminati. And that, that is how you pronounce the name, okay? okay? So what I want to do in today's video is pretty much just go over this entire storyline as if it were a timeline. I want to go from the very beginning all the way to the ending, the aftermath, the conclusion, and rather than jumping back and forth throughout this timeline, I think a best way to get an understanding with this situation and work out who is right here, who is wrong here, is to simply go through everything here in a correct order from the very beginning to just, you know, kind of actually work out what is actually really going on here, because I'll say it for a million of time, this really didn't need to go down this route. But yes, I think it is time to actually start this story, and we start a story with a question. The question being, well... Well, who actually is Blair? Well, as I said before, Blair is a pretty familiar content creator to myself, but I would say, ironically enough, that Blair is slightly more professional to me. When you go and look at her videos, they are very well edited, and they are, albeit skewed to a more political style, they are definitely something which I can see my own audience consuming. She covers pretty familiar topics to me, and just in general, she has a very familiar style when it comes to the commentary genre. It's not necessarily the most unique thing in the world, but honestly, it is hard to be unique in this genre, because let's be honest, all you are doing here is giving your opinion, but with Illuminati or Illuminati's channel, it definitely feels like a very professional, documentary style channel. And I wouldn't say that I'm the biggest fan of this channel, not necessarily because, you know, I, I hate this individual, no, I'm, I'm not going to get in a boxing match today, but mainly because, you know, commentary videos, when you make them, you don't necessarily want to go around consuming every single one, because I would like to give my own unique perspectives on things without having some form of biased opinion, but with this channel, there is definitely one thing I can notice, and that is the output. When you look at the amount of videos that Blair uploads, it's almost daily, and you really have to ask the question, how is this possible? How is a YouTuber managing to put out 25 to 40 minute, well edited, introspective, commentary, documentary style videos almost on the daily? Well, it's obviously because she has 
a team. To make content with this style of editing and just in general insane output, you do need to pay people to just help you with this output, to help you with the script writing, to help you with the editing, to help you with just the overarching things to manage a YouTube channel at this level of consistency. And yes, I understand a few of you are probably thinking, well, Fraser, why are you giving us information on who this content creator is? I've watched her for years now. I, I don't need to know this. I, I understand why you're thinking that, but the reason I'm telling you this is because I think the whole idea of Blair having a team running pretty much the show behind the scenes is where the very first issue comes into play here. Now, plagiarism is pretty much the massive buzzword when it comes to Blair in the last few weeks. Plagiarism is the thing which has seemingly led to the snowball, which has now led to the downfall of Blair's career. And honestly, as I said earlier, I really don't understand the handling of this part of the situation. I don't even understand why this part of the situation even happened in the first place. But yes, on April the 20th, 2023, Blair infamously tweeted, Not Legal Eagles editors broaching my editors to take my video style. And when they didn't give up the information, they literally copied it. And by the way, I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. And they just changed the color from purple to blue. Huh? interesting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are quite a lot of issues as a content creator that I have with this tweet, but I'm going to hold my tongue for a second and just read the follow-up tweets that Blair made to her original tweets. So firstly, Blair shows the email that she mentioned in the first tweet, and in the email, you can see that the editor is, is simply asking for a plugin that was used in Blair's video, and then she goes on to show a screenshot of where this person then came into their Discord and was asking for a specific effect, and then she goes on to post screenshots comparing the usage of effects in Blair's videos, and then this said content creator illegal eagles videos and oh my goodness the colors they're they're so unbelievably different and fellas look this is just it's it, it's just it's just absolutely silly and i'm going to give you an example to why stealing a plugin well, it's not exactly theft. For example, right now as you can see i'm on a green screen and right, and, and right now my editor jacket she's putting up i don't know what's behind me right now it could be it could be anything. But what I'm trying to say here is Jacket is using plugins. As you can see here in Premiere, these are these magical things right here. And what actually is a plugin? Well, as you can see on screen right now, there are things being applied to my face, which I don't actually know what they are because I'm not in the editing software right now. But I imagine they're making me look very pretty and very cute. And the thing is, when it comes to these plugins, they can be used by absolutely anybody, whether they're just the inbuilt ones in Premiere Pro or the ones that you've bought from online services. They're all widely available. But the thing is, is Blair didn't make these plugins. Her editors didn't make the plugins. Even the editors requesting what plugins were used didn't make the plugins. Hence, they asked for it politely in an email. So what I'm trying to say here is theoretically, based on Blair's logic, we're all in a way plagiarizing by using these presets and plugins that have been actually created by other individuals and been put onto the internet available for purchase for monetary reasons. Theoretically, right now, I am stealing. I'm not, but what I'm trying to say is that logic is absolute nonsense. But the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, this is nobody's problem. This isn't an editor's problem. This isn't Legal Eagle's problem. This isn't even Blair's problem. In fact, this is actually, in my personal opinion, a good thing. When it comes to the YouTube community, I've really admired one thing about it, and it is the just willingness for content creators to help each other, editors to help each other, and it's the one thing which I really think has helped YouTube become the platform that it is today. Somebody in the YouTube community will make a wonderful video, people will see that and think, oh, that is something that I want to do, and they will not just copy it, but they will take the style and make it their own. They'll have their own unique spin on it, and with that comes taking things like plugins, certain editing effects, and applying that to your own videos. This, in my personal opinion, shouldn't be a problem, and if anything, should be a thing that content creators out there actually celebrate and embrace. And a personal example of this, which I've noticed over the years, comes with the Sidemen editor, Chipfat. Now, I'm pretty sure Chipfat, I'm not saying they invented this, but Chipfat was somebody that I, I, I think really familiarized and popularized a certain editor technique 
technique where somebody is stood in front of an actual block of text. The text appears to be behind them, and ever since I started seeing Chipfat use this in the UK YouTube community, I started to see other UK content creators use this same editing effect, and this isn't plagiarism, this is just people seeing an effect, thinking looks, it, it, it looks cool, and then applying it to their own videos. In fact, I think it's absolutely ridiculous to even insinuate to a certain minor degree that there is some level of plagiarism here. And especially when you go back to what I mentioned earlier when it comes to Blair and the genre of content creators that she surrounds herself in, and that is of course commentary. And when you are making these styles of videos, naturally you are going to get people out there that have very familiar styles to you. Because ladies and gentlemen, let's be real, it is quite hard to make a unique looking documentary. There are only so many transitions and fun little effects that you can, you can use in After Effects and Premiere Pro. It gets to a point there, sometimes there is a limit, unless you're like David Attenborough. Sometimes when you're a new YouTuber, there are only so many Premiere effects and plugins that you can use, and I think Blair, for some reason, really doesn't understand that, and it seems that in these tweets, Blair genuinely believed that she was like the owner of these plugins and editing styles, when the reality is, is you can go to any other documentary style YouTuber, like The Right Opinion, Jay Aubrey, even myself, and you're probably going to see familiar styles of editing. But honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to kind of reiterate how confused I am about this situation, because it, it really makes me think, does Blair just not edit her videos? Has she never used editing software before? Because I, I, I've always known that content creators use plugins that other content creators use. This isn't some groundbreaking discovery. I didn't get into the YouTube business and, and have a shock discovery that people use the same editing styles, plugins, and presets. It's, it's just how it works, because, I mean, it, it's just how it works. There's no logical explanation other than that, and I, I, I just don't get why she would even make this tweet. It's just absolutely balmy, and it's clear the YouTube community have the exact same thought process of, of, of what I'm thinking here, because yeah, people got very, very angry, but also seemingly confused at her tweet and claims about Legal Eagle. To simply even suggest that Legal Eagle was replicating her content despite he's been making these videos for years before this situation, and despite the fact it wasn't even him asking the question, it was an editor politely asking asking if, oh, oh, can you just give give me a hint, give, give me a little hint to what the plugin is. Despite, despite that, she still did this insane tweet thread, and obviously the community got very, very angry at this. Because pretty much the moment Blair posted this tweet, absolutely everybody in the reply section, just people on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, everybody was just saying, this is an absolutely ridiculous statement to make, and as you can see, people were starting to get really angry at Blair and some people were even suggesting that this is a clear identification of Blair's ego going out of control. Now, to be fair, at this point of the timeline, I I I'm not going to come on here and be like, oh, let's get the pitchforks out. This person is absolutely terrible. With, th with this scenario, I can understand that maybe Blair was having a bad day, you know. I, I don't know Blair personally. I don't know what goes in and out of her life and what, what she has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I, I can mainly look at this situation and think, yeah, you were being a complete and utter bell end, but I, 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 can, I can look past it. You know, you apologize, you, you, you move on, but then you also realize that this is only the beginning of the timeline. This is only the first part of the situation. This was like somebody at the top of the mountain throwing a snowball down, and this is where the snowball started to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and that leads us in to the first aftermath. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what's ironic for calling somebody out for plagiarism? You yourself, a day later, getting called out for plagiarism. Because that's pretty much what happened in this exact situation. After Blair pretty much pissed her pants about this editing thing being taken away and stolen from her, you then had YouTuber H Bomber Guy coming out and saying, personally, Blair, I would define plagiarism as something a bit more specific. For example, 
copying somebody else's documentary directly and putting it into your own script. And and, and, and then he played uh, this little video. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse and misprescribing of controlled drugs. Then in 1995, he was suspended from practicing medicine and made to pay a $10,000 fine for his misuse of prescribing controlled drugs. Now, of course, this is given everything that we've spoken about so far, the very definition of irony. And in fact, a lot of things in this story all do come down to the word of irony. But I, I, I do have to say, jumping ahead in the timeline here, Blair has since, with this accusation of plagiarism towards herself, countered that accusation. But then that counter has also been counter-countered, and that has also been counter countered countered and I, I do want to say we will eventually get onto that but right now we're at the beginning of the timeline and we need to hold ourselves because if we start jumping between things and going forward and backwards it, it, it's going to make things messy and I think this is the cleanest way to do it but yes as you can see here it is another accusation of plagiarism but in this case and scenario this seems to actually be the actual definition of plagiarism taking somebody's words in their own documentary and then using it yourself is very different to somebody asking for a plugin that you yourself didn't even invent. And I'm not making an excuse when I say this, but it also comes back to the whole team thing. When you are somebody like Blair and you are putting out so much content on a weekly basis, I, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if she had a script writer which was trying to work their best rate possible and that led to them, you know, stealing a few pieces of information and scripts out there it's not an excuse the video is three years old now but at the end of the day plagiarism is plagiarism if i stole somebody's homework and used it for my own back in school yes that was 10 years ago but but i i, I have still committed plagiarism in my life and now maybe that's not exactly a, a good comparison here because obviously a documentary and youtube video actually makes some form of monetary gain and homework is just well homework but what i'm trying to say here is it was a, it was it was a bit of a long time ago and I, I i can excuse some things and i get it some of you are probably thinking fraser you're being a bit too easy in this and that, maybe, maybe i am but it's mainly because the the second half of this video is is a lot more serious than the first half this stuff is just well it's it's absolute piss but it, it still is quite bad. Basically, what I'm trying to say is obviously stealing a script is bad, even if it was years ago, but asking somebody what plugin they use isn't plagiarism. It's pretty much the exact same thing of an artist asking another artist what paint they use. Your actual art and the tools you use to make that art are two completely different things. And in this case, the script is the art and the plugin is the tools you use to make that art. Does this make any sense? I hope so. But and after this accusation of plagiarism, then Legal Eagle himself actually came out with a very fair response where he said, Hey Illuminati, and it is Illuminati, not Illuminati. He said, Hey, I think there's been a big misunderstanding. Perhaps great minds think alike. No one on my team is trying to copy you without an exhaustive review of your channel. I believe we used those two styles before your channel did. We've in fact used them for three to four years. And he goes on to say how this is pretty much extremely common on YouTube and he even defends his editor and says that the editor was actually a fan of Blair and to be honest with you I can't find any problems with this response it's very fair it's very calm and honestly it's very nice on Blair if Legal Eagle wanted to he could have probably come out and been like you're an absolute bellend and that's what I'm saying right now but Legal Eagle is uh, clearly far more mature than me and this response is genuinely very nice and honestly when you're looking at this all you're now thinking is well uh, Blair Blair just needs to make an apology, move on with her day, keep on making her decent videos, and uh, everyone's happy, right? 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 
Well, obviously not, because you and me know that this situation goes far bigger than plagiarism accusations and everything that we've covered so far in this situation, and that of course leads us into the next part of this aftermath. Because right now at this point of time which we've reached in the timeline, people were very angry and upset at Blair. This was honestly the first time I've ever seen anybody speak up against Blair, and not because I was sat in the shadows waiting for this person to be exposed, but mainly because I think most people like me thought that, oh, this seemingly is a, a a decent content creator who doesn't have, you know, a, any issues, but clearly a lot of people out there were waiting to speak their mind, and I understand a lot of people do have issues of things becoming a dog pile, but given the nature of what some people have to say in their exposés, I, I think it's very worth listening and going through. So yes, that leads us in to the sad milk situation. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, what actually is Sad Milk? Well, Sad Milk was apparently a collaborative YouTube channel featuring multiple YouTubers where these YouTubers reacted to images, memes, Reddit posts, and just stuff like that. Pretty much just your average reaction channel or Reddit channel. There are a lot of other channels out there like Soot House, and these channels over the years have become very loved. It's easy content to consume, and just in general, it's a nice old happy thing, and it makes you kind of wonder, well, how did something so happy become... Oh, so utterly depressing. And yes, Sad Milk featured multiple creators such as Blair herself, Oz Media, Wonderstruck Guy, Damien Lee, One Topic at a Time, The Click, Salty, and Flinders. And it seems of all of the plagiarism allegations going around about Blair, pretty much the entire community speaking up against Blair, just saying how terrible of a person she is, it, it seems that a lot of the former members of this group, Sad Milk, saw this, and they kind of saw it as an opportunity to finally get their thoughts and feelings out there into the world about their personal personal experiences with Blair and how when it comes to working with Blair, she's not exactly the greatest of people. And I know a lot of people will say, well, why did they not just do this beforehand? And simply I will say, probably because Blair was the bigger YouTuber in the group. When you look at the subscriber count compared to everybody else here, Blair has over a million subscribers. I'm pretty sure she's by far the most subscribed person in this group. And I can pretty much understand why a lot of smaller online content creators would be afraid of speaking up against the big Blair. Blad, blad, bad Illuminati. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that Illuminati would come out and threaten them and, and, you know, stop them from speaking, although that is actually something which did apparently happen in this situation. But yeah, either way, I'm not saying it would definitely happen if they did this beforehand, but I can understand why they waited until this moment. Because obviously, there's not going to be a massive drove of YouTube fans of Blair coming out and defending her. This time, it seems that the entire community was against her, and I guess they finally felt comfortable enough to come out and speak speak their truth, experience, whatever you want to call it. So yes, on the 23rd of April, former member of Sad Milk, The Click, wrote a 16 tweet thread pretty much just exposing his past of Illuminati and Sad Milk. And I am aware that I do keep saying Illuminati, and I know a lot of people are probably going to get mad at me. I, I don't care. It's the correct pronunciation. It's in the spelling. Let, let's get into this thread, right? Hey, peeps, I've seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati, and I would like to clarify that I've not been affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. I left her and her collaborative channel, Sad Milk, due to similar behavior as seen in recent events. And then he goes on to pretty much speak about his personal experiences with Blair, where he says that Blair would lash out at friends, fans, and she just in general had very poor anger management. And he said his last, I guess, meeting with Sad Milk and Blair was Blair screaming at him for an array of random things, such as calling him a bad friend, calling him lazy, and a bunch of other accusations. Quotes such as, there is no way you could have this resume and you could be this effing stupid. He even then said that several other members left pretty much because of Blair and Blair. Then after this, spent months spreading lies, half troops on the Sad Milk Reddit page, and just made vague tweets on Twitter. And he also said that when she was questioned about why the click left Sad Milk, she apparently dug up 11 to 14 year old videos of the click from 2000. 2009 when he was a teenager and uh I mean, you can only kind of imagine what those videos from 2009 of a teenager would have been. And I guess what he's saying here is Blair was being very manipulative, not necessarily telling the truth because the click claims that they left this group because of her behavior. And then according to the click, Blair was claiming it was because of, I guess, his past videos when he was a teenager. And he also mentions other things which will become a very significant part of the story, such as Blair trying to take over the Discord. And he also 
said that Blair tossed around wild accusations, which, again, will become a massive part to the story. Because the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, right now with the whole plagiarism thing, as I said, this really isn't that big of a deal in regards to the context of what we're going to be getting into in the future of this video. Because with this statement from the click, it really quickly started to evolve into a much more serious situation with a lot of hefty allegations being thrown around. But obviously, ladies and gentlemen, when this thread came out, I guess a few people, especially, again, Blair's fans, were skeptical about this post and these tweets, mainly because, for one, there were no screenshots. Despite the click claim to have them, there were absolutely no screenshots in this thread, and obviously screenshots are very important because it actually shows the truth behind a situation. But I, I will just jump ahead in the timeline and say, after this thread, the click came out of a 33-minute long video where, in this video, he provides screenshots and, honestly, he only makes the thing look even worse on Blair. This video is a massive expose of everything to do with Illuminati or Illuminati, and it didn't really do good for Blair and her reputation, but obviously that's later in this video. We want to carry on with these Twitter threads because yet again, another employee of Sad Milk then came out with another thread from Wonderstruck, where Wonderstruck basically said pretty familiar experiences with Blair that the click had, and just in general, his bad experience and interactions working with Blair, stated that he even had to miss Christmas because he was fixing editing mistakes for Blair and Sad Milk, he didn't get thanked for that, and how payments even got delayed whilst Blair was spending money and going to BMW uh, car dealerships, and again, this is no a another thing which evolves into an absolutely massive situation, which, I again, didn't really need to, Blair could have just said sorry and, and, and moved on, but obviously... I think we've kind of pre-established at this point that she's not very good at saying sorry. Wonderstruck then goes on to say that he ended up living with Blair, but almost went homeless because of how bad the living situation was. Pretty much because his experiences with Blair was so bad, because I guess her living conditions were terrible, he, I guess, claimed that she was a hoarder showing photos, which, yeah, to be honest with you, they do look terrible. And I think when you're sharing an apartment or a house with somebody else, I think that you do need to have, so well, I say some levels of respect, you need have respect in general for the people who are also living in that place because that is a shared environment and you need to look after where you are living because other people live there as well and he pretty much said that he almost went homeless because his therapist saw that this living situation was so bad that leaving this home and being homeless was actually more beneficial to I guess his mental health and whilst there was again the complaint of a lack of screenshots and I guess a lack of evidence to back up what was being claimed it does start to come into the phrase of well there is no smoke without fire and then that leads into another former member of sad milk coming out with another thread from oz media and pretty much in this thread it is exactly the same to all of the other threads and it just kind of portrays blair as as a bad person where when confronted on blair's actions she said to people like oz oh i'm just the villain oh i'm always in the wrong and i think anybody that's been in a toxic relationship or friendship knows that language very well when you confront somebody on being a bellend and they're like, oh, oh, I'm always the villain. I'm the bad guy. You always make to beat me out to be the bad guy. That's, that's such a good textbook manipulative trait to make somebody, I, I guess, ignore their toxic behavior and toxic actions. I think at one point in our lives, we've all experienced, whether a friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, who have done these exact same things. And to me, this just indicates a very toxic person. And whilst you can say that, yes, again, there is no screenshots here, obviously, as I just said, there is no smoke without fire. It very much seems that every former friend of Blair is speaking up against this person and as somebody that has done youtube for a while whenever i notice a situation where an entire group collective speak up against one individual usually nine times out of ten those people are in the right because these people have no reason to all individually come out and lie about this person now yes every so often there will be a case of where that did that that was an actual thing but here i i really can't see all of these people collectively 
coming out and so happening to have very similar stories, I think the reality is, is yes, these people have been treated badly and this is their time to speak up and show the world that this person isn't exactly who we originally thought they were. And even one topic of time, another member of Sad Milk came out and posted his experience as Blair and once again, it did just seem to line up with everything that was said in all the other threads. And towards the beginning of this video, I did say how confusing this situation was, how confusing it was that a, a Wilds respected content creator came out and complained that somebody was plagiarizing them when that so obviously wasn't the case. And I think my confusion has really been answered here. I think it is because Blair is a very egotistical person. I think they got way too big for their boots. And I think from these threads, we can definitely see that this is a cutthroat person who is just willing to do anything to put their success first. Now, obviously prioritizing yourself is fine, but when you are doing it in the manner that is described in these threads, it's obviously not good. And that has now led to her calling out people for plagiarism, even though it wasn't plagiarism. But I think that she got away with things for so long, clearly, that she probably thought that she could get away with publicly calling out somebody, pretty much lying about them. And obviously, as we've seen from the community reaction, it obviously hasn't gone that way. But I think that kind of answers our confusion to why she actually did all of this in the first place. Blair is a very egotistical person. I don't know her personally, but just based on all of these actions, I mean, what more can I really take from this? And I think Blair on the 28th of April kind of realized that she wasn't going to get away with this situation because yeah, on that day, she did publish an apology via a tweet towards Legal Eagle saying that she had apologized privately to Legal Eagle, but she also wanted to do it publicly and she stated that she overreacted and overall she is just sorry. Now to be honest with you ladies and gentlemen, I am just going to say I, I don't actually have any problems with this apology. Like yes, you could probably nitpick some things here and there, but to be honest with you, when it comes to creators making apologies nowadays, I almost feel like it's impossible because you're going to have one crowd of people who were like, oh, you should have done it in this way. And you can have another crowd of people that are going to be like, oh, the apology was too short. It should have been longer. But if it was longer, people are going to be saying it should have been a short apology. I think that if somebody has the guts to just say, you know what? I'm sorry, I can honestly respect that. And whilst I have been critical towards Blair in this whole situation, I also do feel a level of empathy because she is on a massive platform. She is responsible for paying a lot of people's bills. And I can understand why an ego would be built up over that time. I'm not justifying any of her actions here, but I'm more just trying to be a little bit understandable. But obviously, me and you know that this apology was not the end of the situation. It very much could have been. She could have said sorry to Legal Eagle in this tweet and followed up with an apology to her former friends and employees saying, yeah, I, I, I'm i sorry that I treated you badly and lashed out. Because let's be real, when you're looking at these threads, they don't really come out as the most, I guess, vindictive and terrible accusations you've ever seen. Yes, some of them are bad and maybe some people couldn't forgive them if they did turn out to be true. But overall, I think if Blair just came out and said that she was sorry for the things that she was accused of by her former friends and employees and the thing with Legal Legal, I think most people would have just said, you know what, fair enough, and moved on with their day and moved on to the next piece of drama. But obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> Illuminati Exposed. Now, that's probably something you think you're watching right now. You probably think that this is the big old Exposed video, but actually, no. That was the name of a video that Blair herself uploaded onto her YouTube channel in a 40-plus minute video where she pretty much goes through every single accusation that she had faced that month, and she also made an apology in that video to mainly Legal Eagle, but some other people as well. But to be honest with you, this isn't a 42-minute apology. This is more Blair. Blair actually surprisingly trying to counter absolutely everything said against her. I actually think around 90% of the accusations that she's faced in this video, she pretty much, well, doesn't deny them, but at least tries to rebuttal them in extremely disingenuous ways. So what I want to do is pretty much go through this entire response apology video, whatever you want to describe it as, absolute big old mess, something like that, if you want to call it that, you're entitled to call it that, but I want to go through this big old 
old stinking mess. Go through every point that she makes to a certain extent. We're not going to go through everything, but ma mainly the main ones. And just kind of explain my problems and issues and even some of the things that I can appreciate in this video. And I, I should also uh, reference the fact that since this video, other follow-up videos to said video have been released and we will go through them. And I will be referencing them here and there, but I'm going to try and not jump ahead in the timeline as much as I possibly can. But sometimes we're going to have to because of some, some, some very serious statements made in Blair's video. So I think we should just start this off with, well, her apology. Before we get into debunking many false statements that have been made about me, I want to start with an apology. I have apologized privately to Legal Eagle the day after this incident occurred, though I have not been publicizing that until right now. Maybe this is something I should have said sooner, but I needed the time to think through the events that have proceeded. And for those unaware, a short story. My editors came to me about how parts of a Legal Eagle video looked similar to our videos. And then there were messages and an email from one of Legal Eagle's editors asking for more information about how we do certain effects. I looked at the compared images that were brought to me and I said, wow, that does look pretty similar. And I impulsively posted about it on Twitter. Truthfully, I should have looked into this more instead of just putting the information out there the second I had a gut reaction about it. I should have asked him what the emails were about, but I didn't. And I made a mistake and plain and simple, I was wrong. So to Legal Eagle and, and team, I just want to reiterate that I messed up and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you and of course to your team. I know I apologized privately and removed the tweets with that apology and I'm now publicly sharing that information with all of you. And I want to extend that apology to my audience and to listeners who are disappointed in me for this. Look, as I said with the whole tweet apology, I could badly react to this and be like, oh, you should have did this and you shouldn't did that, but I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna. We are all human beings at the end of the day. We all do make mistakes. And I think apologizing is a very difficult thing for a lot of people to do because of things such as ego. And as we've kind of worked out throughout this video so far, Blair is a very egocentric person. Now, to be honest with you, I don't really have a problem with somebody having an ego. Most YouTubers out there have some form of an ego, I think to make a video where you're giving your opinions on every single topic, you've probably got to have some level of ego, even if you don't realize it. And, and yeah, I'm speaking about myself here. So yeah, I think that this apology, well, it's 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 decent. And I know you're going to be upset at that. I know you're going to be wanting me to get my pitchforks and, and shout Blair bad. Don't get me wrong. I am doing that. But an apology is an apology at the end of the day. And if the video ended here, she just said sorry for the stupid plagiarism drama. We could move on. Blair could make our six documentaries this week and it would be all nice and cushy. But again, obviously, <laughs> we know that that isn't the case because shortly after this, Blair then goes further into the plagiarism accusations facing her. And uh, this is a bit of a long clip. In fact, most of the clips we're going to be playing for the next, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour are going to be quite lengthy. So if you, if you want to click ahead to just hear what my old big meat mouth thing has to say, uh, that was a weird description. If you just want to hear what I have to say, basically, you can just skip ahead. But I, I advise watching these clips, even if they are a little bit long. Let's start with the first accusation and go from there. After Legal Eagle responded in his tweets, there was another tweet that arose in tandem to this situation. And that tweet was made by another YouTuber called H Bomber Guy. And this YouTuber is someone who also creates longer form content. As someone who creates this type of content and researches various topics, the main thing to keep in mind is the source material used. Things like articles, interviews, videos, documentaries, academic essays, and so on and so forth. As video essayists, this is a core concept to both Harris and myself. Before I get into the accusation itself, I want to address the topic of plagiarism. And that word has been tossed around a ton, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And I just want to take a minute to define this word. On screen are definitions for the word plagiarism as defined by Merriam-Webster, Dictionary.com, and the University of Oxford. I'm showing multiple sources defining plagiarism, but the overall definition is going to boil down to this. Plagiarism is to take someone else's idea as their own or to not credit the source. With that definition being clearly identified, let's go ahead and take a look at what Harris brought to the Twitter table. Harris posted this video saying, and I quote, Personally, at Illuminati, I would define plagiarism as something a bit more specific. For example, copying someone else's documentary directly into your script." End quote. However, in his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary, and even visually you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. 
Additionally, you can even see the dual ellipses on either end of that quote, indicating that more of that source was being cited. When you go to my sourcing page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. It has been three years since I posted this episode. Now, firstly, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit of a mixed bag of a response because, yes, this video is three years old from Blair, where she has been accused of plagiarism, but a video being old doesn't change the fact that it's plagiarism, as I said earlier with my very terrible comparison to copying somebody's homework. And yes, there are quotation marks in Blair's video, but even with this, a lot of people out there, including myself, take, well, take some issue with this. Because, yeah, she is is showing a quote, but the quote is only sourcing a quote that is stated in a lawsuit with the FDA in 1989. The quote isn't sourcing any form of documentary other than the documentary that was cited in her citations in a link in the description. I don't really think that's the same as what she said in her response though. Yes, obviously she did cite it, but not in the video itself. Professor Hugh Fudenberg. Professor Fudenberg has long been con Controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic child patients with blood products. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration, which told him he had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. Yes, there are some quotes used from the lawsuit in itself, what Blair is saying here. He had to stop injecting his autistic patients with blood products. But the actual descriptions coming from the presenter of the documentary is word for word copied. When the person says bizarre lawsuit and continues to speak, every word that he uses in that sentence is directly copied by Blair and on screen there is no citation for this person's words. Professor Fudenberg has long been controversial. A man named Hugh Fudenberg, a former immunologist who has been long controversial. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit involving the Food and Drug Administration. In 1989, he was caught up in a bizarre lawsuit with the Food and Drug Administration. So it's a bit of a mixed bag because I think it technically is still, kind, in my opinion, at least some form of plagiarism, because yes, she has cited it, as I said, in a document in the description, which nobody is going to read. And if, if you saw the video itself, you'd probably think that she herself is just writing that script. So I I, 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 I just, I'm, I'm going to still stick with, she probably did nick somebody's script and use it as her own, or at least one of her script writers did. But at the end of the day, this is, as she said, a three-year-old clip. I don't think that this is the biggest deal, but how she is responding to this, in my personal opinion, is disingenuous by saying that she quoted it when no, what she quoted in her video was the lawsuit. She didn't directly quote the guy speaking and presenting the documentary. So this is weird because it's not really that big of a deal, but she is now making it, again, a, a, a bigger deal than it needs to be, which is pretty much the entire premise of this drama. Every response she makes is just incredibly disingenuous and just makes things even worse. And that only continues when we move into the sad milk part of this video, because pretty much everything else in this video is about the former employees or friends, whatever you want to call them, coming out and speaking against Blair. So uh, let's take a look at what Blair has to say. When the Sad Milk channel was formed, I initially took the lead and I made the channel, I made the Discord, I got my mods from my server to help run the new Discord. I hired and managed video editors to help us produce more content. I was the one who was sourcing the topics and files for each video. And I was the one who had set the schedules for recording too. The reality of the situation was this. With creators in different time zones, it was logistically pretty hard to get everyone together at one place in one time. We tried to do it organically multiple times, but unfortunately someone would always end up missing from the recordings. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into a YouTube channel, and I bore the brunt of it for this project. And it wasn't something that I was doing to have total control as some members have suggested. I managed the schedules and the editors because it was just something that needed to be done. People weren't stepping up to the plate, and I did, and I ultimately bit off more than I could chew. 
It was a lot of work, if we're being honest, and I was beginning to burn out pretty quickly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I can actually kind of understand what Blair is saying here. When you have a group project and not everybody is participating, in fact, nobody is doing anything, sometimes you do need a leader to step up, to st I can't speak English, to step up and take the role of leader and do the things that other people in the group aren't willing to do. And that can be stressful. That can be annoying because we've all worked on a group project where it's at university, work, school, whatever you, wherever you are, we've all worked on a group project and there is always that one little prick that doesn't do the work. They just sit back in the behind the scenes and when the project's done, they claim all the success for themselves. That's something that happens. It's annoying, but it doesn't generally justify being a bell end to absolutely everyone. I'm sure in the Sab Milk project, there were probably people not, you know, doing the work that they should have been doing, and a lot of people else had to kind of cover up for that and do the work themselves, but that doesn't justify being a bell end to everybody. Yes, it can be stressful, but honestly, I, I, I don't really think it justifies anything that was really said in all of the threads made out there about Blair. And you can kind of see where this is going because I see a lot of self-victimization in this opening statement about Sad Milk. And that pretty much just is the rest of the video because sometimes she will make a half-baked apology, but it will be two minutes of, oh, I did this, I did that, it was really stressful for me, I, I just was really struggling. And obviously that is context behind some things, but to me that's only there to make people feel bad for her and get away with, well, uh, bad actions. Had I known how I would have been treated through this channel and afterwards, I never would have joined this project. Essentially, everyone in the group had two main responsibilities for Sad Milk. The first was that you had to show up to the scheduled recording, and the second was you had to pay your portion of the editor's fees as they arise. After the editors were paid, any earnings that were left in the channel were split into six equal pieces for each person. Since this was a project among friends, we all initially agreed to just split the earnings six ways, even though I was taking on some extra responsibilities. When it was time to pay the editors, I wasn't answered or told that they would just get it to me later. I had to do this at various points with a vast majority of the members of the group. They would eventually get around to reimbursing me only after I expressed in group meetings how I was upset that I have to do everything and I also got stuck footing the bill too. What quickly transpired was that members either couldn't or wouldn't reimburse me for the editors. For clarity's sake, I do want to disclose that we as a group later revised our agreement after paying all editors and creative freelancers that 5% of remaining earnings would go directly to me for the administrative work that I was doing. After that, the remaining earnings would then be split amongst the group evenly. Now, I am going to keep saying the buzz phrase of now to be fair, but now to be fair, I can kind of understand again what she is saying here. People not being paid is probably a very stressful thing, but in the long term part of this whole situation, I really don't think it's that big of a deal considering she herself said that, well, a payment structure plan was then put in place later on. So this issue was resolved and whilst it probably was annoying at the time, I think this is just part and parcel of a business. Sometimes there are money issues here and there. This does happen, but it does seem that this was resolved. So I'm not really sure why this is necessarily being mentioned here. Whilst I can understand it probably was stressful and did put a bit of a burden and on Blair. To me, given the fact that it was clearly resolved from Blair's words alone, I, I don't think that this is that big of an issue. Especially when you look at the DMs that she presented against the click here, you can clearly see that in these DMs, he stated that he reached his credit limit and payments did not come through because of this limit. Now, yes, this probably was annoying at the time, but to be honest with you, it wasn't like he was doing this intentionally. It wasn't like he was going down to a BMW car dealership. It just seemed that his card was was blocked, his bank wasn't letting him make any payments, and again, this was something that got resolved. And I think the reason that this is being mentioned comes into what I just previously said of where when Blair ever gives an apology, it comes with like two minutes or three minutes of self-victimization, giving reasons and understandings to why she did the things that she did. Even if they're not valid justifications, she kind of needs to set the, the, the standard of, oh, I was in a bad place in order to make her audience feel bad for her. This is just something that a lot of people out there like to do, not necessarily just in influences, but before somebody in general will apologize, a lot of the time they'll be like, oh, I was so sad and I was so stressed and that's why I did this. And obviously 
half the time it, it, it doesn't justify somebody's actions, but that is what Blair is doing here. And of course, that leads us into her apology. The click brought up in his Twitter thread was that I was angry and yelled in a meeting. But what he didn't share was the context of that meeting. As I've previously stated, the scheduling and money issues had been an ongoing problem. In the meeting that he vaguely references on Twitter, this is what actually happened. I had become more and more frustrated about how I was doing all of the work, I was doing all of the maintenance, and then I was also having to financially foot the bill to the project. As I said, it was burning me out pretty quickly, and I was thinking about leaving the group. Ozmedia suggested that he try to run the meeting and I not attend, and I agreed. But one topic and click were very insistent that I be there, even though I said I was not ready to talk and I needed more time. So when I entered the call, I tried to let everyone know that I was uncomfortable with having this conversation and I was not ready to have it. Again, I would like to point out that at this point in time, these were still my friends. These were people that I liked and cared about. Letting your friends know, hey, I'm not okay right now. I'm really stressed and hurt. While you all get to stream, I still have to pick up the pieces to keep this channel going is a really difficult conversation to have. Before the meeting started, I was told that if I didn't show up, that they would not have the conversation with me and everything would just stagnate. So I tried to put the channel and my friend's needs above my own. Reluctantly, I joined the conversation, and as I was speaking, one topic talked over me, and out of frustration of this happening yet again, I raised my voice and said, can you shut up and let me talk for once? And he left the call, and that's the last time I ever spoke with him. Looking back at it now, I should not have spoken to my friend like that. I felt that I wasn't given time to process and think things through, and in process of, emotion vomit came out. One topic, I would like to apologize for that, this time publicly. Clearly, this was a situation that affected all of us very deeply and personally, and this was an exciting idea, but one that never really took off the way I think we thought it could. To all of the members of Sad Milk, I just want to say that I'm very sorry that I caused you stress throughout this project. Again, this does just seem like some form of self-victimization. If somebody was to ever make an apology to me in private, but that apology came after three minutes of justifying the reasons that they did those things to me, I, I, I would usually say, well, you're not actually sorry. You're just saying sorry for the sake of saying sorry. And if you were sorry, you would not have spent three minutes trying to justify your actions. Somebody that is sorry doesn't need to justify the things that they did. They will simply just say sorry if they are sorry. So far, Blair has actually spent like 25% of this video claiming to be the leader of this channel, taking charge, doing the things that the other members weren't willing to do, and this is why she was getting annoyed at people, because they weren't doing their bit, and it really just started to stress her out and make her lash out at everybody. But I don't really get that, because even in her justification for her lashing out, that was in a scenario where the rest of the group were trying to have a meeting to kind of resolve the issues and get ahead of all of the problems in the group. But when they tried to do this, Blair was like, no, I, I don't want to be a part of this. It's just making me really sad. And, and I, okay, if you were sad, that's completely fair enough. And if you did need space, that's completely fair enough. But you can't also make the claim that nobody in the group was trying to help or do their bit when you yourself just said that they were trying to have meetings and I guess resolve issues in the Sad Milk YouTube channel. This obviously all seems like extreme extremely petty drama, but when you present all of this in an extremely disingenuous way, it makes it far more vindictive and manipulative to me, because this didn't even need to happen, like everything else before this, but you are so egocentric that you just can't simply say sorry without making 42 minutes of justifications and excuses. And as I said earlier, I have empathy for this person, I understand the stresses of running a YouTube channel, but just because I feel some form of, I, I guess, similarities to this person doesn't mean that I'm just going to sit on here and be like, oh, that completely justifies treating people like shit. Now, obviously, everybody now and again has treated somebody like shit. We've all done it, but we've always all, all, always said sorry. Well, at least I hope so. But here, it's just somebody who clearly isn't sorry, but they are just trying to save face so they can keep uploading their YouTube videos and probably not lose more employees. But then, ladies and gentlemen, after after this, we start to move into the subject matter of the click and the accusations that he made towards Blair, and how Blair pretty much just responds in an outright denial to nearly everything that the click had to say. And of course, if she is speaking truth, that's absolutely fine, but uh, 
As you can imagine, it's a, once again in a more disingenuous manner, and just in general, how many times can you say something is disingenuous until it just becomes an outright lie? The click brings up how, as he puts it, a very convenient series of videos resurfaced with him saying some not so savory things after he left Sad Milk. His old videos, as he puts it, aged like milk. They did. I'm not going to dive into it further. The information's out there if you so choose to look. And as Click stated, those videos are 11 to 14 years old. And to be perfectly clear here, those videos are not any of the reasons as to why we split ways in Sad Milk as Click tries to insinuate. Even back in 2020, I had stated that those videos had nothing to do with the ending of Sad Milk. I was actually unaware of those videos at the time of our friendship, but had I been aware of them, that friendship would have likely ended sooner. Now this for me, it, it's just absolutely weird because I can't with no good conscience hear what she is saying here. Hear that the old videos of the click wasn't the reason that I guess they went their own separate ways. I, I, I can't believe that that wasn't one of the reasons, mainly because of the video that the click uploaded responding to this video from Blair. Now I know I said that I'm not going be jumping ahead in the timeline, but I feel like it's kind of necessary here to hear what the click has to say about this one specific thing. So, uh, yeah, here's the clip. Here's a former staff member of hers getting paid to sift through raw audio recordings of me looking for dirt, more specifically the R word. I needed to work with this person to help me find click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I can do that, just let me grab a shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video, but can't remember which one, and she's over her head. I'll pay you $200 to find it and here's the payment. Now ladies and gentlemen, I know this isn't specifically Blair saying that this is why he was kicked out or that's why he left Sad Milk, but it is very clear to me that Blair in 2020 had a very specific interest in the certain words that, that uh, the clique may have used when he was a teenager in 2009 and I think that's only further backed by this. People can learn and people can change. That being said, at the time in 2020, Click was still using horrifying language and slurs that have long been deemed unacceptable. Now, regardless of your opinion on these usage of words, I again do think it is very disingenuous to suggest that this wasn't exactly a reason to why these two people went their separate ways. It's very clear that Blair is, I, I guess, focused on this specific point. I mean, she was literally paying people to find these words from Click's mouth in a raw media file. Do you understand how absolutely mental that is? To pay somebody like they're some Star Wars bounty hunter. She's got Django Fett and she's paid Django Fett not to go take somebody out, but to find a video of this guy saying a slur. I've got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> I, 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 I just think this is one of the more mental parts of this story. But moving ahead from that, obviously there's not, not really going to be some form of resolve in this situation, I think it's very clear to me that this definitely was one of the reasons why Blair and the Click made their separate ways. Regardless if Blair wants to deny it, I think hiring this bounty hunter is clear an indication of that, clearly, I should say. But then we move into the Discord situation where, I mean, it just gets far more serious than anything we've spoken about. And honestly, I didn't expect it to go into this, but whenever you have a situation with Discord, obviously, you're going to be dealing with some big stinky nonce. I do think it's relevant to bring up that in 2019, the Clicks channel was terminated by YouTube for sexual content. At the time, a few YouTubers, including myself and Oz Media, band together to help reinstate Clicks channel. Oz spoke to his MCN representative, and I spoke with YouTube directly. This is something that I now look back on with so much regret. Had I known at the time what was going on behind the scenes, I never would have participated in helping Click with his channel. Allow me to explain the situation a little bit. The Click and I had shared Discord moderators around the time of Sad Milk being created. Due to the Click's inaction, our shared moderators had brought a situation in his server to my attention. A situation involving in Click's Discord, there was a 19-year-old bragging about a 12-year-old that he was claiming to be involved with. A moderator reached out to get more information on this situation. This 19-year-old then reiterates, and I am directly quoting this here, I talked with my therapist about it 
even too, and he told me as long as I don't touch her, it's okay. Click and his team did not pursue any immediate action to ban, restrict, or report this individual. Now the word immediate is pretty, uh, pretty vital in this specific situation because immediate means you're doing it right now. Right now, we're banning that guy from my Discord. Get that guy on my goddamn Discord. That's what we're doing, man. We're doing that. Immediate. Look at the definition right here and then take into the context of Blair lives in the United States and the click lives in Europe. Now, when you live in a, well, different continent, I, un I understand that geography isn't spoken about in many schools in, in the United States of America. I think the whole school system needs to be completely redone and revisited in that country because it's clearly not doing enough when the fact that people really don't seem to know about time zones. Because when you're in another country or continent, there are obviously going to be different times. And in this situation, it did turn out that the click was in a different time zone. And in fact, when all of this drama was happening, the click was indeed asleep. And yes, some of the people will say, but oh, maybe some of the mods at that point of time should have immediately banned him when he was asleep. Isn't that the role of a moderator? To look after the Discord when the content creator can't? Yes, I absolutely agree with you. And I know I keep saying that we're not going to skip ahead in this timeline, but we're going to have to do it again here. Because clearly, the click agrees that the moderator should have immediately banned them because in this Twitter thread after Blair's video, he stated that the moderator should have done more here and the mods are obviously obviously not on the team anymore, and the click was asleep as it was 3 a.m. at the time. So obviously, once again, we have a disingenuous presentation of this specific point, because this, in my personal opinion, isn't the click's fault. I have spoken about situations with Discord in the past of where curators have enabled bad behavior in their Discord whilst fully knowing that something was going on here, but this definitely isn't that. This was a situation which got resolved and the click was asleep whilst this situation got resolved but Blair seemingly didn't want to mention this in her video because I feel like she obviously wanted to present the click to be the worst possible version of himself when obviously we know that that is complete and utter bollocks the only reason Blair is doing that is because she kind of has no real valid arguments so I guess her best argument is to betray this guy to be a terrible human being because you know yeah he may have made valid points but also he's an awful human being so those valid points are well no longer valid. When me and you know that this situation was presented incredibly disingenuously, he's actually, well, from my point of view, a, a decent person, and well, it's 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 a nothing burger, I, and I hate that phrase, I hate the phrase nothing burger, but Blair, you have made me use that phrase. And then after this, she goes on to mention more predatory behavior that went on in the Clicks Discord, of where somebody was posting explicit photos in the chat on Discord, but again, yes, this is a terrible thing, but the Click can't control what people do and post. He can only ban these people after they do these things. Which he absolutely did, and I'm not now going to blame a man for a crime somebody else committed, but it seems that Blair is very much doing that in her video. Having to relook at these messages again still makes my stomach turn even three years later. When Click didn't initially take action, I switched tactics with him and I called one topic, who was and still is to my understanding, one of the Click's closest friends on social media. I got into a call with both of them and I shared these files with them. And one topic opened the files, he was horrified, and he said, and I quote, I've read one and I don't want access to those screenshots. It was after this conversation that Click took action and reported and removed that individual from his server. I really wouldn't lightly make accusations like this unless I had seen them for myself. And let me be abundantly clear here, I am not trying to accuse the click of nor do I have any reason to believe that he could be a pedophile. However, he cultivated an environment that was a breeding ground for inappropriate behavior with minors to occur, and that's exactly what happened. Look. I'm not going to say anything here as, as much as I think this is absolutely a, a scummy and terrible thing to say. I'm not going to say anything. And I'm, I'm just going to, once again, jump ahead in the timeline. I don't want to do it, but Blair's making me do it. I'm going to jump ahead in the timeline and I'll allow the click in his video responding to this uh, video by Blair, where he pretty much disproves everything that she said with screenshots. Now, the first detail that was conveniently left out of the accusations is that I was asleep. 
In my time zone, this occurred around 2 a.m. and within the span of me sleeping, this random creep in question had already gotten banned. I took the liberty to dig through the old ban logs on my server and here it is. He was banned at 2.14 a.m. My time zone. She brought one topic into a chat room, as she shown in her video and her accusations. However, her statement in these DMs about click knowing is very odd, as I would have been very unconscious when the ban was happening. She might be referring to me knowing by the time I woke up, but the fact remains I wasn't there, nor did I endorse this random creep. Hey, I don't mean to bother you, but can we talk soon when you're free? I'm in a bit of a conundrum and I don't know what to do. Yeah, what's going down? Can I call? GF is getting ready for work. How sensitive is the topic? Very. It involves the P word. What is going on? In click server and click knowing. 19 year old and 12 year old combo public server, blah, 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 did nothing. And this was on the heels of clicks admin sending naughty stuff. And one topic says, hang on, I'll walk over to my mic. Okay, ready? Thank you, always. But, as stated, a ban was already issued before I even woke up, about 14 hours before Blair brought this up with OT, if her timestamps are correct. So this was actually not a ban I was even personally involved with. It's also important to note that this is, sadly, the norm. Our server alone has 44,000 members and almost 3,000 bans. It is a well-known fact that Discord has real problems when it comes to exploitative individuals and communities using their platform. We as creators do our best to clean this up as well as the platform teams. Neither I nor my team condone this sort of exploitative behavior and do our best to address it when it comes to our attention. This isn't a clicks Discord issue, it's a Discord issue. This is such a quick and concise and honestly wonderful debunking of the bullshit that Blair has put in her video and it makes me honestly even more shocked that she has, has said the things that she has said in her video. She basically said that this guy is, 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 is allowing an environment like this to fester. She said that he's pretty much the reason for this. And I can't believe that this person has a million subscribers where she makes content criticizing other individuals for their manipulative and wrong actions. How is this the same human being? It makes no sense. The Click's original post about Blair was, oh yeah, we were all treated bad and just in general, Blair was a bad friend. And how did she respond to this? Well, by saying he cultivated an environment of nonces. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's absolutely mental because it's all bollocks. And we could just end this video here and say, yeah, this is nothing but absolutely disgusting. And there's nothing more we can really say other than, yeah, this is just a disingenuous lie of a video, blah, blah, blah. But obviously me and you all know <laughs> We're probably not even halfway through this yet because it doesn't end there. I also hope that since my falling out with Click that he has learned from his past errors and worked to better himself. I hope that he and his current moderation team are holding themselves to a higher standard. The past three years have been challenging to all of us and I think it's safe to say that living through a global pandemic has changed us in one way or another. Click, I hope you have learned to not tolerate such behavior in your server. I hope that you have learned from this and that you'll continue to strive to do better. I truly regret ever being friends with you. And I hope that I can finally close the door on that chapter in my life. I want nothing to do with you, and I can only hope that I will no longer be associated with you after all of this. Well, Blair, sadly, when you speak absolute codswallop about somebody for 20 minutes straight, you're probably going to be associated with that person for the rest of time, because this is seemingly you taking your well-respected career and just burying it in the mud. I don't know why you are doing this. Please, for the love of God, just, just log off the internet for a month. Take a break, because this response is absolutely horrible. I, I'm genuinely concerned for this person. Like, obviously I know what they're saying is bad, but surely somebody in the right mindset wouldn't make a video this terrible. This video is one of the worst response videos I have ever seen, and I think it comes from the fact that, yeah, Blair definitely thought that she was untouchable, and honestly, as I said, I, I weirdly feel bad for her. I know this app is stressful, especially when you're paying employees, but I don't think it justifies anything here. As I said earlier, if this video was just an apology, it was like a four minute video where she said, yeah, sorry for that, uh, and I'm gonna try and do better, moved on. I think the community, as I said, would have accepted that. Well, not everybody, of course, but I think her fans at least would have respected it, but this is just her making it a million times worse, and that moves us away from the click part of this situation and moves us into the wonderstruck part of this situation. 
To begin, let me explain Wonder's employment history with me. During Sad Milk, all of us were contractors to that channel. We were paid as contractors so we could handle taxes in our respective countries on our own as not all members were American citizens. As many of you are aware, video editing is largely considered gig work. And in the industry, most folks are contractors and work on a variety of projects for different clients at the same time. During December 2020, like all of the members of Sad Milk, Wonder was considered a contractor. On December 24th, 2020, at 5.39 a.m., I received a message from Wonder letting me know that he took a shot at reworking a video that had already been edited by a different contractor. I want to clarify, I did not ask him to do this. This was something he did of his own accord. I responded to him, letting him know that his edits would go live at 1 p.m. on December 24th, 2020. I don't want to claim to know what goes on in Wonder's personal life, but claiming that he missed Christmas with his brother and father, I just don't know how that's possible when the video was finalized early morning on Christmas Eve. Now, this part of the video is actually kind of fair to a certain extent. Yes, Blair did not ask Wonderstruck to edit this video, but I will counter that and say throughout this video, Blair has been saying nobody helped me pretty much. She had to lead the charge herself. She had to become the leader of Sad Milk and do everything herself. And that's why she was lashing out at everybody, me, me to everybody, shouting at everybody. And if, if, if that was a, a reality, then I, if I was in that group, would want to step up and help that person who was clearly struggling and I think that's kind of what happened here with Wonderstruck. Wonderstruck saw that Blair wasn't doing well, he saw that there was a product that wasn't very good, and he thought, you know what, I'm gonna go and edit it and try to make it better, because Wonderstruck was one of the main editors at Sad Milk, and yes, obviously, this isn't a gotcha moment on, on, on Blair, but on, honestly, what I think it does show is Blair had some good people surrounding her. Even without consulting Blair, people were trying to help and make things easier. And you also do have to remember that in the tweet, Wonderstruck never claimed that Blair made him make or edit this video. He just said he did this out of the kindness of his heart, and then Blair didn't even say thank you. And yes, even with my explanation there, I, I do still think this is a pretty fair point by Blair. So what I am going to do is, is once again, jump ahead in the timeline and take a look at Wonderstruck's response to this video from Blair and play a, a bit of a long clip here of what Wonderstruck actually meant in his tweet where he spoke about this situation of missing Christmas, editing this video and not being thanked for it. And yes, this is a long clip, but please bear with. I will speed it up a little bit so you can get through it quicker. I just feel like you guys need some context here. As for missing Christmas, you raise a very good point, and without context, I can understand where your confusion would arise, so hopefully I can clear this up for you. I'd like to paint a picture here if you allow me to do so. December is one of the most important months as a creator. For those of you who don't know, there are better or worse months to post to YouTube due to when advertisers are most willing to pay, and most advertisers are wanting to put their highest performing ads on videos during the holiday months such as Christmas. This equals a higher CPM, which for those of you who are in the creator space, it will all just kind of water down to this. Higher paying ads plus more videos equals more push equals more money in your pocket. It's a lot of boring stuff. Puts food on the table, pays your bills. That's all you need to know. At this time, I was a full creator. I didn't make crazy amounts of money, but I made enough to live on my own terms. During December, I was churning out content for my own channel. I needed it as a small growing channel and as someone who needed to pay his bills. However, our editors were short in the month of December. So what Blair fails to mention in her video, I will clarify. December 21st, I had just completed a sad milk video that took me 16 hours, give or take, to make. I had pulled an all-nighter to do so, as we had discussed trying to have a stronger pull for the holiday months. A few days prior, I had just pulled yet another all-nighter to get a video out for the 19th on my own personal channel. We had an editor who had been tasked to complete a sad milk vlog that was intended to go up December 24th. Blair had hired this editor. She never once, as far as my knowledge, checked in on this editor to see his progress with said video. Where I grew worried is that as far as I knew, I had never seen this editor do any work for Sad Milk, and we were really coming up on the deadline of the 24th. On December 23rd, after starting another project and working through the entire day, putting a dent into my own personal edit, I got into bed only to find that Oz had received the video from the editor. I took a look at the video, asked an unbiased source their opinion, and we all agreed that the video had major issues for a supposed finished product. These issues included scuffed audio, poor audio leveling, unnecessary edits that made 
relatively no relation to the edit itself, followed by long periods of dead air for an increased watch time push. I do not mean this as an insult. It resembled a home movie gone bad rather than a fleshed out project for a channel that had almost 200,000 subscribers. I knew this was a severe problem for two reasons. First, the deadline for the upload was the following morning. Second, this video was expensive and intended since November to be a Christmas Eve video. The video in reference was a sad Moke gingerbread house building competition where we all flew out to Colorado. Blair purchased a large amount of items for said video, such as microphones, gingerbread houses, and Santa hats, all that material you need to make a gingerbread house. I'd like to add that Blair intended to use these expenses as a tax write-off so it wasn't a total loss. We were all contracted for an entertainment company. In order for this to be a tax write-off, we would need to produce a video to prove as such. So now we have to think of the perception of Sad Milk, a project that represented all of our names. This puts us in a position with very limited options. We either let down the audience and post a very scuffed video that would exhibit a lack of care for the content we were making, which was not ideal given we had just lost half our members. We delay the video, which ties in with the first issue as our Christmas Eve video, which would either get out the 26th or the 27th at the earliest due to our available editors. Or we scrap the video, which leaves Blair out of money regardless, but now we have also wasted an entire trip visiting another state, and there are a bunch of expenses that can't qualify as a tax write-off. So I got out of bed after working all day, and I took my best shot at reworking a video in a style I was not familiar with. I was up roughly until 5 a.m. working on that video, and I waited to make sure it was good to upload and that we had the okay. I did this to avoid those negative outcomes I just listed. My sleep schedule was beyond screwed, so by the time I went to bed later that night, I slept due to pure exhaustion until well into the early afternoon of Christmas Day. To add to this, my family does not see each other very often, so for us to be in one room is a very rare thing. I had not seen my brother in almost a year, and I know Christmas is important to my father. Since we can't all spend an entire day together as we all have our own various lives, we plan to spend the morning of Christmas together. Obviously, it did not pan out that way. I'd like to add that no, Blair did not directly ask me to make this rework. However, Blair had made it clear in the last few months, especially when Click and OT left, that she felt she had no help with the channel, that she felt the responsibility fell onto her. This was me helping her. So yes, what I actually think this is, is more somebody doing a decent thing for Blair and Blair just not being grateful and thankful. And as I said, it just being a bit of a representation of the environment. Obviously, sometimes you won't say thank you for things and you'll feel bad about it if you just forget to do that. And it might have been a stressful time because trust me, as a content creator, December is a very stressful time. Everybody is uploading because they want that December CPM and it becomes a bit of a war zone and I can get stress, but I can also understand why Wonderstruck would have been upset. He basically missed his Christmas doing this favor and obviously that's not exactly a fun thing. But yeah, this is pretty much one of the more null points in this whole situation, but that does move us into a more important topic of payments. Because yes, one of the accusations made in Wonderstruck's thread was that he was paid late for, you know, his work. As for his claim that he didn't get paid for his work for more than half a month, I would like to let everyone know that Sad Milk's payroll was on a bi-weekly schedule. That simply means that there is a payment every two weeks, which is essentially half of a month. This is something that I have continued within my own channel to this day. Both salaried and contracted employees are paid every two weeks. And to further add to that, most companies, at least in the US, pay on a bi-weekly schedule, so this is not anything- Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I need to announce to you all right now that I'm actually going to make an apology. And no, I'm not going to guilt trip you for two to three months before I make that apology, but I do need to say sorry. Because once again, we need to skip ahead in the timeline and go back to Wonderstruck's video. Because in Wonder's response, it involves bank statements. And obviously, I do not unfortunately have access to the bank accounts of these people. I would absolutely love to, but I don't, so... Yes, here is Wonderstruck pretty much just explaining what actually happened here and why payments were indeed made late. I'd like to now focus on my pay. I said I was not paid until half a month after. This, I will admit, was anecdotal mostly. Blair said I was paid on a bi-weekly Sad Milk basis. At this time, Sad Milk was making money, just not a whole lot of it after editorial expenses. So, typically I could see a check for 80 to 140 every month. As for editing, I had negotiated $500 per edit as Oz helped me realize my worth as an editor and as for compensation for me not being a full-time editor. I'd like to add that in part of what I agreed for edits, I 
would do additional sprite movement, motion, and scene creation. This was painstaking to do, but this was also a quality result I would bring to the table of this channel while also working on my own channel. The editor we hired to the vlog, to my knowledge, was to be paid $200 for their edit. However, since I reworked the video last minute, I was to be compensated with $100, which I believe was fair pay. So I'd like for us to view the following bank statements. Two in particular, one on January 29th, 2021 for 125 and another on February 29th, 2021 for $600. Now, I tried to dig deeper, but this just says a transaction from a bank occurred. I'd like to state that at first, I believed I was receiving sad milk payments via PayPal, so I tried to find an old email. Since I was making a fair amount of money, I would usually just let money stack into my PayPal and I would take it all out at once. And you can see right here that this is what a statement like that would look like in my bank account. At this time, I worked full time, so my only income was from Google AdSense, Twitch, and sad milk. While it has been a long time, if I remember correctly, these payments would numerically and chronologically line up with sad milk and editor payments. It is the only possible source of this income that makes sense. Which then shows me, for the month of January, I actually only received one sad milk payment if that's the case. And it also distinctly shows that I was in fact paid separately as both sad milk talent and an editorial talent. I'd like to note that these payments are over the course of one to two months, not a month and a half. At the beginning, Beginning of January, you can see I was paid $100 from this income source. That would make sense given half of the $200 video would, yes, be $100. However, if you look at the month of December, I did not receive one payment from Sad Milk. So I would assume unless Sad Milk just did very poorly that month and we made absolutely zero income, as I did not manage these channels' finances, this payment would be the Sad Milk payment for December. And if it was for fixing the video, why was I clearly paid the $600 here followed by the prior regular Sad Milk bank statement, 500 being for the original video I did, and 100 being for the video I corrected. I had someone else take a look at the calendar, and if these payments were bi-weekly, and I had a pay period beginning on the 1st, my pay period should have seen payments starting from the 1st, followed by the 15th, the 29th, which is correct, but we are missing a pay period, the 12th, then the 26th, but I was paid on the 19th. You can argue that Sad Milk was performing bad financially, which resulted in delayed or no payments by this time, as we had not uploaded since December, and views did in fact dwindle. But that begs the question, if the payment of $600 is an editor payment, which I'd argue is because Sad Milk itself and its contractors never saw an amount that large in its history, why am I being paid for it not half a month late, but almost two months late? My only other theory is that these payments were in a source such as PayPal where I could allow the funds to store up then deposit. However, it would still be delayed and show I was paid separately as an editor and contracted talent for Sad Milk. So honestly, again, I I don't understand Blair's response to the situation because with everything Wonderstruck said in that response to what Blair said there in response to what Wonderstruck originally said, it seems to me that yes, payments were indeed made late and obviously that is an annoying and bad thing to do as somebody's boss but obviously these things can happen it might be a shock to you all but i have actually paid my editor late before jacket can confirm right now because once there was an incident where my bank decided to freeze my account i don't actually know why maybe it was suspicious payments to onision's only fans maybe it was that i can actually kind of understand that but yes i have to make a late payment i felt sorry and bad for that and i think blair could have just resolved the situation with an apology saying you know what i'm sorry but obviously no she had to go down once again the disingenuous representation of this situation which to me isn't even the worst thing and i don't even think wonderstruck think it's the end of the world but it's just the fact that it's been painted out in such a disingenuous way which again is the entire story of this blair saga but then it it only gets worse. Because pretty much the entirety of this part with Wonderstruck and Blair is seemingly just Blair weaponizing Wonderstruck's mental health and just using it as a way to be like, oh, I, I, I was so good and I was so nice to this person. I just did absolutely everything I could to make them feel uh, better. He would often complain about his roommates being terrible people, his friends being mostly terrible people and unmotivated to do well in life and how his car was always breaking down and how his channel was not going in the direction he wanted. And then he talked about that last bit of family that he had moving away and he was essentially alone. I won't speak on behalf of Oz, but 
I know I was moved by Wonder's stories. Without going into personal details, I was pretty horrified by what he had explained happened in his past. I was saddened by how he constantly talked about how bad his life was and how he felt like a failure. He said he felt alone, depressed, and uncertain of the future. And at that point, I knew I wanted to help him in whatever way I could. So yes, Blair being the absolute goddess that she is, took it upon herself to help by seemingly, I guess, moving Wonderstruck to where she was then moving to in Texas. And it was an absolutely charitable action, a beautiful action, which only a god could truly do. Now, obviously, um, well, I'm... I'm I'm not going to speak. I'm just going to, once again, play another clip. And I understand I'm playing a lot of clips right now, but that's mainly because there are a lot of contradictory statements or pieces of context being left out. So a lot of clips are going to have to be played. At the end of 2020, I paid for his tickets to visit Oz and me in Colorado. During this trip, we discussed the possibility of Wonder moving out to Colorado due to his discontent with his life in Texas. Oz Media and I had just moved into his newly purchased home in April 2021, and he decided to welcome Wonder into his house. Unless Oz Media was doing so without my understanding, Wonder was not charged any rent, utilities, or internet for sharing our living space. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, as I said earlier, this is an incredibly beautiful charitable action from Blair. She is an absolute beast. You know, I just had soft to this. I'm not taking the hat off. I'm sweaty under here. But at soft. We're not doing that. We're not hats off. Hats on. This is a beautiful action. But of course, the problem is, is once again, it has been disingenuously portrayed. Because once again, context has been removed. And once again, I am being made to jump ahead in the timeline. It's like a hat trick for the amount of times I've done that now. Because Wonderstruck basically comes out and explains that the whole no rent payment was pretty much bollocks and the reason that this was mentioned in my personal opinion with Wonderstruck not paying rent was obviously to paint the picture that Wonderstruck was I, I, I guess a bit of a scrounger you know a bit of a bum that, that's a bit of a mean word to use but that's what I guess Blair was trying to portray Wonderstruck as but the reality is is well that's just not true. We had actually discussed a payment plan for rent. What Blair leaves out, and what I find very perplexing as to why she left out in her video, is that the reason I didn't pay rent was because I was going to become Blair's tenant. Not once does she mention throughout this video that when I first had the discussion of moving to Colorado, it was because Blair wanted to get her hands into the real estate market and wanted to build a home, something she had discussed with other former Sad Milk members. It wasn't just me. I made a reasonable first tenant. I was someone she knew, and I obviously made income, so kind of put two and two together. You can say this is a good deed on the surface, and it most certainly appears that way. I'll get into how over time Blair would have controlled every aspect of my life via transportation, income, and housing. I sincerely do not understand why the conception of this home was never presented in the video. It leaves out a massive gap of context. The home I was told would be finished by August and that I could stay the summer, and the last month before moving to Colorado after finalizing my lease, I was informed that the home would be pushed back until December. This made me highly uncomfortable, which you can see the dates in these private DMs between Oz and a friend of mine who will remain anonymous. I have always been a very independent person. I have never had someone else pay my rent once in my life, and I have been living on my own since I was 18. To try to paint me as a freeloader when you also leave out that I was originally only supposed to stay until August, you were supposed to be my landlord, and that I only stayed 30 days in Colorado feels like a contorted attack on who I am as a person. While I was in their home, if I didn't know how to help, I would oftentimes clean their home. I wanted to help Blair with her recording space as she felt stressed in her little office. I wanted to buy us plants to liven the place up. I tried at every possible turn to earn my keep. And when I felt alienated, I tried to actively find an apartment in Colorado Springs to give them both the space as I felt horrible, seemingly never being able to help in any way at all. It was beyond unfair. I made every effort to not be a burden as it is quite frankly one of my biggest fears in my entire life. It's absolutely genuinely unbelievably insane to me that everything, well nearly everything in this video has just been complete utter bollocks. Like honestly, what is the need to make up this 
disingenuous bollocks constantly. It's like it's like she just uh, just breathes bollocks. Everything that comes out of this person's mouth, it's just a lie or a mistruth for a piece of context removed from a certain situation. Why do you keep doing this? I, I, I'm trying to come up this from like an unbiased perspective, but you're just making me feel even worse for these people involved in this situation. When I looked at these original threads, I, I genuinely did think that whilst there is some bad things mentioned here, I didn't think it was the end of this world. But so far throughout this video, I think the world's starting to end. We may as well be in that one terrible 2012 movie, which is actually weirdly an enjoyable movie to watch. But what I'm trying to say here is this whole situation has just been blown up out of proportion because of Blair's own actions of making everything seem far worse. And yes, these situations are actually far worse than her former friends and employees portrayed in their threads, which is extremely ironic because Blair's video is pretty much trying to portray those people as the bad guys, but what she has done here is just portrayed her to be an absolute, and I say this not very lightly, but an absolute bellend. And I think it really does explain the beginning scenario of this entire situation with her accusation of plagiarism towards Legal Eagle. At the beginning of this video, I was confused. I said, I don't know why that happened, why she did this. It just made no sense. But now I know why. She is clearly an egocentric, centric, centric person who is cutthroat and willing to do absolutely anything to put her and her business before anybody else. These situations are just so unbelievably unnecessary, and I think that only proves how further malicious Blair is. But again, it doesn't end there, because shortly after the whole no rental thing with Blair and Wonderstruck, she then pretty much goes on to portray him as a lazy worker. The content for Wonder to edit was dependent on me being able to live stream. During this time, I unfortunately only had two streams for him to work on, which Wonder would have been able to produce about four videos from. Wonder did not meet the deadlines for either stream. Despite this, I kept him on payroll. I continued his pay, even though no work had ever been completed. Although there was only a minuscule amount of work for Wonder to do, he still managed to act up within company spaces. He made inappropriate comments on forms that were visited visible to other employees, he didn't complete tasks that were assigned to him, and he failed to follow company protocol. I have a strict policy regarding formal disciplines, and within his short time of working with me, he had already met the criteria for termination. Now with what Blair has said there, you are probably going to be under the impression that, wow, this person is very lazy, and he's living rent-free in her house. Why is this person complaining in his Twitter thread? And honestly, I, I could completely understand that if you heard this from Blair's video. And the whole point I'm trying to make here is Blair's video is incredibly incredibly manipulative, and if you aren't, like, listening to every single side, going and searching out through these one-hour videos made by Wonderstruck and other people, you probably are going to take Blair's word as gospel, like you have from all of her videos in the past, because as I said, she makes videos about these topics, she is somebody who was regarded as trustworthy from before this, so I think her fans are probably very easy manipulated, and I think that's why she is done this in this situation. I don't really think there was a way out other than saying sorry, so I think what she's done here is just be incredibly disingenuous, and that is only backed further by Wonderstruck once again disproving her betrayal of him being lazy. I'd assume you'd attribute me as someone with a very poor work ethic, and I honestly would not blame you. However, while Blair is being very anecdotal here, I'd like to provide receipts that prove the following. Proof that I was not kept on payroll, and I was fired before my deadline even happened. These were not short clips. The comment that I made on a forum that was grounds for termination, Blair leaving out how long it took her to actually provide content to edit, Blair leaving out that I had asked for work in various other aspects, my deadline extension due to my computer editing software corrupting, not me being lazy, me flying to another state to meet said deadlines with plane tickets provided, and again, proof that I was fired before my deadline even happened. Before we begin, I'd like to state that I was informally fired on a phone call July 27th and that I received my final severance letter July 30th. But as you can see here in private DMs with an editorial manager, my deadline was extended to August 2nd. I was fired within my deadline. 
line. To add context, Blair had not streamed for the entire month of June, and come the further end of mid-July, she had finally streamed. I was given one stream that would result in two videos having 20 minute plus durations on both videos. So for context, these were not short clips, rather 20 to 40 minute chunks of content, which is exactly what I signed up for. This in itself was not a problem. However, upon getting far into making the video, my editing software corrupted said in a statement that it was pleased with the ruling which would allow it to continue to use sh treatment. So that's from this article. I was staying with my dad in Texas, which we'll touch base on why in a little bit here, and only had my laptop, which had never had an issue before. I had had this laptop for roughly, I want to say a year at this point. Never once had I run into a software corrupting issue. So I reached out to an editorial manager explaining the situation. They asked that I take PTO, but instead I held off because Oz Media said he could get my PC fixed. I was running out of time, but my deadline initially was July 26th, so last second I flew to Colorado to get my computer just so I could turn around and fly back. It was at this time I had noticed I was locked out of the editor files, which I found odd given that I was still within my deadline, but I didn't exactly know what was happening. I just had figured it was an error at the time. I'd like to make note that the other editorial manager explained to me that my deadline at this time had actually been extended to August 2nd editorial manager reached out to me on the 26th saying we needed to talk. For one reason or another, this conversation got pushed to July 27th. I believe this was just due to a simple scheduling conflict. I believe by the time I was able to take a call, that like when I had seen the message, they were busy for the rest of the day. So it just got pushed over to July 27th. It wasn't like I was like ducking the calls like, oh my goodness. It was here on this call that I was fired for explicitly not meeting deadlines, which I find highly confusing due to once more I must reiterate that my deadline was August 2nd. Not to be redundant, but I'd like to remind you that I flew to another state just to meet this deadline for my boss who was constantly subtweeting about me. As you can see is acknowledged even by one of her own managers, and they told me specifically that this was not okay behavior. This person, <laughs> this person traveled across states to get a computer and then he flew back just to edit a YouTube video. Mate, if you told me to get on a plane to go and edit somebody's YouTube video, but I've got to get on two planes to do that just to pick up a computer, I'll tell you to get stuffed. Honestly, I think this person deserves the Employee of the Year award for just being willing to do that to work on a YouTube channel that isn't even his own. So it's even more weird to me that Blair betrayed this guy to be lazy by saying that this guy wasn't meeting deadlines and stuff like that. When, when when we know from Wonderstruck's video that this is absolutely not true and I genuinely don't understand why Blair would even try to present it in this way. But of course, I, I, okay, what am I talking about? Of course I know why. She's obviously just trying to manipulate her audience into believing her bollocks, but he, he, from a human point of view, I, I, I don't understand it. And I can now see why Blair is getting tens of thousands of dislikes per video because this behavior is absolutely reprehensible. And ladies and gentlemen, we're not even on the more serious serious aspects of Wonderstruck's video so far, because of course you know that this is going to go into her weaponizing Wonder's mental health, but before we get into that part, we then need to go into the whole altercation and drama involving BMWs, because yes, Blair uh, apparently has a love for BMWs, and Blair even at one point of time claimed that she was going to try to help Wonder, who didn't have a car, by buying him a BMW. And to cut a long story short, pretty much Blair then went on to say after Wonder only this BMW, he then breached his contract, I guess, and then that led to her uh, firing him over disciplinary reasons, and then because of that, she thought that she had the right to repossess this car, because it technically was still her property, but uh, I'm not going to go any further than that, I'm just going to play Blair's clip for you now to give her point of view of what actually happened here. There were two outstanding instances that voided our agreement and constituted the repossession of my vehicle. The first was the proof of insurance that Wonder never provided. Insurance that is something federally required of any vehicle on the road in the United States. The second infraction on our agreement occurred when Wonderstruck left the state of Colorado to go back to Austin, Texas. You can clearly see these stipulations in the document on the screen right now. Due to multiple defaults by Wonder in our contract, I felt that I had no choice but to repossess the vehicle, which was my property because I am the one who owned it. When I landed in Austin, Texas, I called the non-emergency Austin PD 311 number to explain the situation to them. 
I told them that I had all of my title documents on me, I had the extra key, I had my insurance cards for the vehicle, and I asked them how I should proceed. They told me they were unconcerned as I was well within my legal right to collect my own property. They furthermore offered me a police escort for the repossession if I wasn't able to collect the car on my own. So on July 29th, 2021, I was able to get a hold of my vehicle and I took back my property. I would like to take a moment to bring up the condition of the vehicle upon its repossession. Within one month of using the vehicle, the car was visibly soiled, trash was littered in the car, it contained dirty clothing, which consisted of like, I think two pairs of dirty boxers and like maybe three mismatched socks. There was also a huge crack that went across most of the windshield and for some reason, the glove box compartment in the front passenger seat was somehow broken. The state of the vehicle was shocking to be honest, but at this point, I was just happy to have my car back and know that it couldn't be damaged any further. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I'm so somebody that just has terrible standards when it comes to cleanliness, but I'm not going to lie to you, this photo isn't exactly the messiest thing I've ever seen, and the thing is, with Blair's video, we've seen so far that she tries to present everybody in the most vindictive and terrible way, even to the lengths of lying about these people, so if, if this was really the worst that she could show, I, I, I genuinely am struggling to take this seriously in any way, shape, or form. And sure, it is a little bit messy, but at the end of the day, I don't really think that's much of a problem and I think the reason that she's bringing this up is of course to make her audience once again side with her and feel bad for her and me and you know that that very much did not happen. And the thing is ladies and gentlemen even if the car was in a worse state than what Blair showed us I still wouldn't have a problem with that because think of it like this you don't always clean your flat constantly to 100% the cleanliness rate of when somebody would come over. The only time you ever will really immediately go and tidy everything up and I don't mean there's just shit around everywhere but I just mean, you know, when somebody's coming over to your flat or your house, you usually will make things look even more tidy than they currently are. And I think in this situation, Wonder didn't know that somebody was going to be picking up the car. He had no awareness of this, and I think if he did, he probably would have tidied it up a little bit, just like you would if a friend was going to come over. But if a friend or family member wasn't coming over, you're more than likely just going to be happy in not a mess, but in a, in a place where you wouldn't necessarily invite somebody over to. Does that make any sense? I feel like it makes sense. But then somehow it even gets worse and worse as it always seems to because once again Blair has presented this information in a disingenuous way without certain pieces of context. Context which actually could make her look even worse in this situation. And I'm just going to allow Wonder to once again speak his point of view here. And yes, this is again going to be another long clip. But the reason for that is of course you need all of the context here to get a true understanding. And ladies and gentlemen, you're like two hours into this video at this point. I I don't think that you can complain about your time being wasted if you're already at this point. I explained the situation to my dad and I ended up leaving to go see my father so I could spend the 4th of July with him and stay a while so I could mentally reset. I also did digital work and this was not in violation of my employment as I could work wherever I wanted via laptop. But before going, Blair had me sign her BMW contract she had been meaning to get to me for a while. She was fully aware of my intent to visit my father and stay a while, especially given that again, I worked remotely. You now know the events that led up to July 29th, where the car was repossessed. You know the story of the deadlines, how I wasn't kept on payroll, how I flew to Colorado to make sure said deadlines occurred, etc, etc. We don't need to fully recap there. As Blair mentioned, she said I was legally bound to this car via contract. However, after I was fired and Colorado was said and done, I had my father, who is an ex-police officer and the former contractor, as well as a lawyer friend of the family, look over and review this legally binding contract. They both agreed that this was in fact not a legally binding contract. I'd like to state that I am not a lawyer and I don't know how that fully works, but let's say for argument's sake, the contract was legally binding. Blair claims I broke the contract by the following. No proof of insurance. Cars to reside in El Paso County. Okay, well, here's my proof of insurance and here's my official mailing address during this time. You can clearly see it states Colorado. Here again, you can also see that my mailing address has not changed after the repossession. This car was not residing in Texas 
Texas as I did not reside in Texas. I lived in Colorado. I now like to point to a conversation I had with Oz Media because Blair and I were not on speaking terms at this time, which was something she herself suggested took place between us. July 28th, 2021, one day before the repossession, Oz and I had a phone call together where I stated I would not be moving back to Colorado. He agreed it was probably the best option for me as he was still at this time sympathetic towards everything happening. Note again, the car did not reside in Texas as I did not have a residence in Texas at this time. Upon hearing this, Blair informed Oz that she wanted me to pay something that is known as a depreciation value, which is essentially it's like, okay, you can't pay for the car, so you're going to pay for the value that the car lost while it was in your possession. I agreed. I didn't want further bad blood. I just wanted this whole situation to be done as it had caused me enough stress as is. Oz gave me a set of options as to what I could do with a car, and I picked option two where it was agreed I would bring the car back to Colorado, gather my belongings, and I'd pay the value via regular payments, etc. However, when I asked to see everything my name was tied to legally with the car, which any person would do, I was met with a copy of the car contract. So I asked again to see the paperwork of the car. This was to ensure I was obtaining an accurate account of the car's value so I could legally assure what I was paying for. I believe that any person in my position should have done this. It is the only right thing to do to make sure you legally know what you're paying. After this message, I never once got a response. Later in the early hours of July 29th, 2021, Blair flew down to obtain the BMW. Hours after I agreed to pay for the car's appreciation value under the condition that I was paying what was accurate and visible to me. I did not have the text itself as currently the phone I had at the time suffered. I believe it was a corrupted UI. All I know is I had a Google Pixel and after some time, I believe last year, I plugged in the phone, gave me a big old question mark when I charged it. So I looked it up and I was like, what does this mean? Essentially, it just meant, yeah, your phone's kind of buddy. So if anyone knows how to pull images from a UI corrupted phone, please reach out and contact me as I will happily provide these texts if I'm able to do so. At roughly 3 a.m. Blair sent me a text stating that I had breached numerous contract violations and that she was in Texas to repossess the vehicle. It goes without saying I was asleep at this time so obviously I did not see a message that was sent to me at 3 a.m. in the morning. Once I woke up and I saw the messages, I asked Blair for an explanation as to how I breached my contract to which I was ignored. However, However, Blair stated she would make arrangements for me to obtain my items. This never took place. I took to Twitter where I made a tweet regarding what had just happened and I was immediately reminded by one of Blair's managers that I could not speak out on the matter and I was threatened with NDA. If I had to explain the feeling, I felt helpless. Again, I just wanted to do the right thing and do it the way I was asked. And now I wake up and all my belongings are gone. I cannot explain how weak that makes a person feel. It feels like just a massive, excuse me here, a massive you for no reason. Blair puts in her drive that the car had bottles, a few wrappers, and some clothes. What she fails to show in her video is my skateboard, both my Sad Milk and Wonderstruck Guy play buttons, my $800 GoPro set, and a whole list of other items I was prohibited from obtaining, which I found out recently from Oz. These items were subsequently thrown in the trash after some time. I'd like to touch on the condition of the car as well. It looks bad, and truthfully, if I saw that, I would turn my head as well. I would think this is a madman who owned this car. But I'd like you to remain open-minded that I was basically living in this car due to not being able to stay in the same house as Blair, as my therapist recommended specifically that I do not do that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think you can kind of understand now why I had to play that long clip, because obviously there is so much context being removed from the situation with the BMW. Now, personally, at face value, I don't feel like this is the worst thing, and that's probably because the thing we're now going to speak about after this is so much worse than everything else in this situation. Situation. But honestly, it's once again Blair just making things a million times worse. She could have just had better contact with the people involved in this situation, and even if she didn't, she could have just apologized afterwards and given back Wonderstruck stuff to him after she'd taken the car. But obviously, even since then, I don't believe Wanda has gotten back his items that were in the car, and there are even GoFundMe pages to help support him get back some of the things in that situation that he lost. And a lot of people have been describing this as 
some form of financial abuse. And honestly, I can understand this because the acquisition of the car during the middle of the night when Wonderstruck was obviously sleeping, the not giving back the possessions, this is just absolutely horrible, but also pointless behavior. This could have been avoided so easily. If she wanted to repossess the car, she could have. Wonderstruck seemed open to that, but she could have just did it with better contact and just given back the things. I know I'm repeating myself here, but again, it's another situation where you just don't understand why this has gone down the route that it has, and you can only equate it to this being an extremely malicious person. And I think this is exactly what we have here with Blair. And even then, despite yes being around two hours into this video, it doesn't end there, because the debates of Wonderstruck's dog comes into the question here. Because in Blair's video, she starts bringing up another point of basically saying that Wonderstruck seemingly wasn't really a good owner when it comes to his dog, basically stating that his dog was aggressive, angry, and did bad things here and there, and Wonderstruck didn't do enough to care for the dog, and this was a big reason to why their living situation was so bad. But again, it's another situation that has been presented disingenuously with a lack of context. I love this guy. Look at him. Blair, for some reason, brings up an entirely unrelated matter involving my dog, James, and I. She paints me to be a dismissive, uncaring father to a starving, aggressive, abused dog. This dog right here. This dog who's scared of fucking leaves. So allow me to shed some light. I adopted James back in 2019 from a small shelter in Central Texas. I remember seeing his cage and the information on it said, cla <laughs> said class clown. So naturally, I, I had to say hello to this guy. Within the first 10 minutes of meeting James, I immediately knew that this guy was going to be my best friend. He was sweet. He was gentle. He was social, but he's very shy. Another fact about James was he was the dog that the staff would use at the shelter to introduce other dogs to see if they were friendly or not due to James naturally calm nature. When I moved to Colorado, I did bring dog food. It was just about half a bag though. James's brand of dog food is also specific to a store in Texas known as HEB. So I had to find him a new specific kind of dog food as he was had a sensitive stomach and switching his dog food would result in messes. But upon arriving to Colorado, Oz and Blair wanted to see if James wanted to try Casper's brand. So we just switched over to that. He loved it and Casper has been known in the past for making severe messes everywhere due to his very irritable stomach as he is a special needs dog. As for his collar, James did have a collar, but it was old and starting to wear. I went to PetSmart on my second day in Colorado and bought him a brand new dog tag alongside a red plaid collar, a collar which he still wears to this day. I also did not lock Casper in the room to keep James roaming the home. I would put Casper in a separate room sometimes so James could pee as Casper would bark constantly at the bedroom door which James and I stayed in. Whenever James was out, Casper would gnaw on on his ears, which is something Blair did not mention. James did bite Casper. He made Casper bleed. But what Blair left out is that since Casper was a puppy, he has had a bad habit of gnawing on other dogs' ears. This is due to him being around another dog named Percy who exhibits this kind of behavior. And you can see this dog exists on Casper's own YouTube channel. So one day Casper kept chewing and dragging on James, so naturally he snapped back. James only did this because Casper wouldn't stop attacking him. It wasn't the other way around. As for James getting out and pooping downstairs and me not helping clean it up, there's a lot of reasons for this and a lot of context left out. The night James got out and got lost, I made a mistake and forgot he was out there in the backyard. I was in between helping Oz with something downstairs and going back and forth, but James needed to pee so I tried the multitask. After like 10 minutes, Oz suggested we go grab dinner real quick and we left for like 2 hours. I personally messed up and I take full accountability for it happening. I left James out in the backyard, but what pet owner hasn't made a mistake like this once or twice in their life. Sometimes someone forgets to close the door or the gate or whatever and it happens. It's a story as old as time. It doesn't mean you don't care about the dog. It just means an accident happened. Now ladies and gentlemen, I will completely attest to this. As somebody that owns a dog which has a lot of issues from previous food aggression to severe levels of anxiety, I can completely attest to the fact that dogs are difficult to deal with. And obviously that doesn't mean that they're not wonderful companions. They're not amazing amazing to have in your life, but naturally these are wild animals. Yes, they are domesticated, but they are still going to have things which make them do certain things which we don't necessarily seem to like or, or necessarily deem to be civilized. That's com that's completely fine in my opinion. And what's happened here with Wonderstruck isn't really anything out of the ordinary. 
dogs can do bad things honest mistakes can happen with owners and i think how blair has presented this is yes once again disingenuous she has painted a picture here whilst leaving out tons of context to truly give a real representation of this situation in question and how many times as i said earlier can you present a situation with certain amounts of context being removed presenting that situation disingenuously before that then becomes just an outright lie but again i do have to say as i've been saying throughout this video i do not understand the point of any of this i get that blair's been through a lot i get that there's been a lot of stress there but surely she realized that her response was not going to go down well i genuinely do not understand how somebody can present such vindictive terrible pieces of information left out with such little context i don't understand how she did this and thought this was going to go down well and honestly it only makes me think that all of these situations are a million times worse than we actually realize because if they weren't i feel like she would have just been like yeah I I i'm sorry for all of this and moved on I will keep saying that because this situation is just absolutely mental. It's like going to a court, getting accused of a certain crime, like, I don't know, stealing something, and then it turns out in that court case, you then get arrested for, like, murder. Because the original social media crime here was so small in comparison to what it has evolved into, and that only gets worse in the next part of this video. Because as I mentioned earlier, a big chunk of this video is blocked. Blair weaponizing Wonderstruck's mental health in truly one of the most disgusting and heinous ways I have ever witnessed in, in, in some form of exposed video, clapback, whatever you want to call this big mess. She weaponized his mental health by, in this video, presenting Wonderstruck's suicide note. And I'm not going to show that on screen right now just because of how personal this is, how truly vile it is that anybody would use this as a gotcha moment, but that's what Blair did in this video. This was the length that she was willing to go to, and for a lot of people, this really was the breaking point. As I keep saying, I feel like a lot of people would have been willing to accept an apology, but now I think there is no way coming back from this. Using somebody's mental health at the level of what it was to clap back at people in a social media squabble is just absolutely insane to me. And I'm not going to even play Blair's clip from this or even Wonderstruck's clip from this because I genuinely don't think you need context from either parties here to truly realize how grim this is, how utterly just terrible and vile and honestly just surprising. Because at one point of time, I I genuinely believe that this was a respectable content creator and my entire perception has now just been flipped upside down but also as i've said this is a content creator that makes videos exposing situations drama people scenarios and it turns out that she was pretty much just as bad as some of the people that she speaks about in her own videos i truly do believe that people can change and learn but the problem is here is all of these actions are still taking place today it's not like the actions that were described in the thread from three years ago were being described as today. When this whole situation started, it was based on past things, but this video from Blair truly shows that she's not gotten better, but she's actually gotten worse. To me, she is just an absolutely, honestly, quite a nasty person. But then again, for the 50th time, it only gets worse because shortly after weaponizing wonderstruck's mental health she st <laughs> she starts crying at the end of the video and look obviously you could just share your emotions and have natural emotional reactions but but i i just don't know if i can take this serious i know it's very cliche to say somebody crying in an apology is emotional manipulation but this video is not an apology it is an outright attempted failed attempted expose on her friends i just want to say thank you for always being my support through all of my ups and downs. I know that a lot of these personal situations in my life left me very thin and sometimes irritable. And I want to say thank you for supporting me through it and talking me through some really hard times. Your support and your friendship meant more to me than I think you'll probably ever know. I'm going to miss all the fun things we used to do, eating way too much cheese at the melting pot. I'll miss you teaching me how to play Command and Conquer and playing it and how you've always obviously been Casper's BFF and you know how Casper is 
I'm not afraid of Oswaldo. We're both gonna miss you a lot. The truth is, like we've privately discussed before, I always hoped that we'd be able to reconnect again in the future and mend our friendship. I meant that when I said it to you, and I believed you when you said it back. Even after everything that's happened, you were the one person that I always thought we could just get it and pick back up where we left. And unfortunately, I think that ship has sailed. Oz, I miss the friend you were to me, but I think this makes it clear that we finally need to cut all ties. Honestly, I just really don't understand this. I get she's upset, but I don't think she's upset for the reason that she's presenting in this video. I even think that she is disingenuously presenting her own emotions here, trying to convey them as a way of her missing her friendships with certain people in this situation, when the reality is, I think she's upset because she's been caught out. Again, People can grow, people can change. I'm not going to base my entire judgment on this person from what she did in 2020, but I am going to base my judgment on this video, and I see this as an incredibly manipulative hit piece. And that does kind of bring us towards the ending of this video, finally, and I think to kind of come to some form of conclusion to this segment, I think this video is very much the thing that buried this person's career. I think with everything before this, people could have moved on with their day, but seeing that this person is still far worse than what was presented in 2020, I really don't think anybody is going to turn their heads and move away from this, regardless of any future apologies. And I think that is only represented in the community reaction to this video, and as you can guess with the second aftermath, or third, I'm not really sure, I think I've lost count at this point, that in the aftermath to this situation, things were not looking good. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's fair to say that this video from Blair, it, uh, it didn't really go down well with the community. Same with a magnificent pair of bananas. Oh, great heavens! So yes, just looking at the comments of the video, and, uh, um, yeah, you can kind of get a picture here that things are going to remain negative for a very, very long time. And to be honest with you, with every single criticism in this comment section, I think most of them are absolutely valid. Usually in a situation like this, you can see people reaching, making things bigger than they actually are. But honestly, no, I can really agree with most of the comments here. And in fact, even Saul Goodman's appeared, and he's clearly absolutely fuming. And with this community backlash, as it usually does, it led to more exposés, more people coming out with their experiences with Blair, and I don't really think there's a point of going into them because, let's be real, they're pretty much the exact same experiences as the ones mentioned throughout this video, and there was also a lot of clips going around of moments aging badly of Blair. I, again, I, I don't really see a need to play those clips, mainly because I think in hindsight a lot of things can age bad in pretty much every situation, but what I'm trying to say here is that the snowball is now like an avalanche, which is just caused like a, a global freezing. There's so much snow from this avalanche that we're all pretty much just crushed on. <laughs> well, I, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Pretty much, the situation was only getting worse, which obviously was the exact opposite of a reaction that Blair was hoping for. And of course, as you know now, after Blair's video, the click came out with his response video, Illuminati and Sad Milk, and this video was dropped on May the 2nd, and yeah, we've looked through some of this, but there are also some sections I want to go through now, because yes, we've looked at the Discord stuff and a few other things like the Bounty Hunters, but with the Bounty Hunter stuff, that kind of evolves even further into, into something which even I didn't expect, because whilst things have been malicious throughout this video, whilst things have been absolutely just disgusting, it shocks me that it only continues to get worse and worse throughout these responses. Now, a big part of the Clicks video and the Clicks original claims was that, of course, he was removed or left the Sad Milk YouTube channel because because of usage of slurs in, I guess, 2009. And the thing is, ladies and gentlemen, this whole debate only continues in the clicks video, but it goes down a pathway which, honestly, I really didn't expect, but it also made me realize why a lot of people are now comparing Blair to Creepshow Art. And this is an individual which, honestly, you don't really want to be con 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 I can't speak English, compared to. Here is Illuminati having a conversation with the same admin, sharing the same kind of you know, dirt digging old videos that we've seen previously in this video. And she says, 16 seconds, the alt account is gonna love this. In the next screenshot, you can see her writing out a draft. 
I saw in the sandbox announcement of all the milkmen. Now I'm seeing the comments. We all agree it's obviously not on good terms. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, etc., etc. This draft matches with one of the posts made by an alt account called Doobie Schmertz on Reddit. And this is the entirety of the post. This is the truth about sad milk. It really looks like creative differences is dumb AF. Blair tweeting about being stabbed in the back, one topic, leaving his supporter server, and then so on and so forth. And I was a big fan of the click. I thought his streams were great, blah, blah, blah. But then I think Blair saw some of his streams. He did a stream where he watched some of his old videos. So this is actually Blair on an alt account making the claims that Blair must have seen some of his old videos randomly. She totally wasn't paying people to dig up dirt. This is her on an alt account spreading misinformation and trying to enhance her own image. Here's another little funny post from the same account where she forgot to switch accounts and interacting with the Animal Crossing subreddit, um, at least according to Oz. Here it keeps going. Hey, listen, Blair, I'm putting this all together. What kind of cover-up is this? Click was saying these bad things. Creative differences. Click is a liar. And not to reclaim some one topic as friends with someone while pretending to be wholesome and good. This is all Blair replying to her own announcement under an alt account. And it keeps going. Click said the N-word and replies and claiming I'm not going to reply and I'm horrible. Here is a long post. I'm not gonna... You can pause it if you want to read the whole thing. I I don't want to. Here is the same account, Doobie Schmertz, on Twitter. This was an account I remember distinctly from 2020, 2021, that was relentlessly harassing myself, my friends, my colleagues, my streaming colleagues, past colleagues, ex Sad Milk members, community members, stat you name it. You name it. At the time I wrote it off as a disgruntled troll with a little bit too much time on their hands and tried my best to ignore it. This was Blair all along. She was making alt accounts to spread her stuff because she probably knows deep down inside that the stuff she was digging up on me and all the stuff she was doing was so petty that she could never actually make a public statement of it. So she did this just to get back at an ex-colleague. She did this, she paid people to dig up dirt, make alt accounts, harass me for months. Why? Why? And it keeps going. Here it is on Twitter, tagging me, tagging her, herself. It's tagging Deaf Noodles. Here it's tagging Midnight Palma, Damien. It's tagging a bunch of people from the community and Salty. It's tagging Amanda the Jedi. We had her on the guest on the podcast and you come after Amanda the Jedi? Here's Vamps getting the same posts. Here are arguing with a bunch of fans. Here's one topic with his wholesome the Halloween special. Oh, doobie schmertz. Right there. Well, isn't that just wholesome and sweet? Here's Anne Mine with a cute artwork about myself, OT and Salty. And yep, yeah, Illuminati's right there with her alt account. Posting this slanderous video that she edited together, collecting all the worst things she deemed from stuff I said when I was barely of legal age. And it keeps going. Here it keeps tagging one topic. Here it's tagging Blair again. It goes on. It keeps going. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get things straight here. This isn't a concerned friend. This isn't a concerned boss worrying about her business. This is somebody being extremely vindictive and malicious. This is somebody that wanted to bring somebody's reputation down. And by doing this, they were going to harass multiple people. This isn't somebody that cares about these issues at hand from what uh, the click may or may not have said when he was 12 years old. This is somebody trying to maliciously harm somebody and weaponize issues which we should care about, but I, I, I really don't think Blair seemed to actually care about when she was carrying out these activities that the click was describing. And it's hilarious to me because she was curating fake accounts to harass her friends, former friends, employees, while she then goes on to cry about her former friends in her response video. And that's just absolutely insane to me and really just shows that the whole crying thing was absolute bollocks because curating fake accounts to harass people, spread things about them. This is something only a terribly nasty and malicious person could do. And again, I can completely understand why she would be compared to Creepshow art after this situation. The curating of fake accounts to spread information about people who you don't like anymore, that is exactly something which Creepshow art herself did. And the Click's response video was pretty much the nail in the coffin for Blair's video. When you look at the comment section, I think people 
out there were just genuinely surprised that this is a creator that they've grown to love for years, not just because of her commentary, but also because of the content on Sad Milk, and it has just evolved into a situation which I don't think anybody expected, and the same goes for Wonderstruck and his response video. Now, there's not really anything we can really say about that from here, because we pretty much went through everything in the comparison to Blair's video, but the sentiment stands. The response video from Wonderstruck did absolutely irreprehensible damage to Blair's reputation, and rightly so. And in short, this is probably one of the biggest, or if not the biggest, forms of self-destruction I have seen in a social media world. I genuinely didn't expect to be going down this pathway where we have been going when I started researching and writing this video, but am I surprised by this? Well, given previous things that have happened in the YouTube drama sphere, honestly, not really. So I guess the only thing that can leave us with now is the conclusion and, and, and fourth or fifth aftermath and where Blair goes now after this massive cluster of a situation. So ladies and gentlemen, where are we at now with everything in this saga? Well, Blair is pretty much back to uploading her daily documentaries and everybody has seemed to stop responding because honestly, I don't really think there's anything else that could be said by her former friends and former ex-employees. And I think Blair has realized something that I realized in this video is that sorry at this point of time isn't gonna cut it. Regardless of if she makes 50 apology videos, I, I, I don't think anybody is gonna take that with sincerity. I don't think anybody's gonna believe it. And even if they do, I don't think the people who were once a part of her audience will ever feel comfortable coming back to a content creator like Blair. Because let's be honest, with the content that she makes, it is very informative, very documentary style. And that may be a weird description, but what I'm trying to say here is a lot of people were watching her video for facts, and that factual thing is based on trust. Again, my descriptive words are why I am not a documentary channel. But what I'm trying to say here is that the connection between Blair and her audience at one point of time was based on trust and with that trust people could take the information that she was providing and take it as gospel but with this situation and exposés on such a grand scale I don't think that people will be comfortable consuming the content after this because the trust has been absolutely decimated. I really don't know if Illuminati or Illuminati will ever be able to recover from this situation and I I'm never really going to prey on somebody's downfall unless they've you know, committed the most heinous crimes possible. And, and I, I would like to say that I, I do hope that she grows and changes like she said about the click in her video. Like, I'm, I'm not even saying that to be the bigger person here. We've all made mistakes in our life, obviously not to the degree that Blair has done in this video, but I am still going to say, I mean, I hope she learns from the situation because to me, it's clear out of everybody, she definitely needs to. And I think the best way for her to do that is probably to actually just make content, go back to her roots and just in general, just listen to people and realize how much of a bell end she's been in this situation. I wanted to come at this video from an unbiased perspective and, and give an angle where I think I can be completely fair. I don't know anybody in this situation. I have no stakes in this, reasons to win on somebody's side. Honestly, this is just my opinion. And my opinion is, Blair, you have just been so unbelievably malicious. You've been so disingenuous. And I think you need to just go back to your, your focusing on yourself, doing your own thing, and hopefully, I guess, becoming a better person. Not because of what you did in 2020, 2021, 2022, but what you have done in the last month. But yeah, I think all I can say here is that pretty much is the end of this massive saga. I understand there are some things that I could have covered, but the reality is, I think you get the picture from everything that we've gone through so far. This is a weird and strange situation, and I didn't expect it to get to this, but ultimately, YouTubers are gonna YouTube. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that pretty much is the ending of the video. Thank you very much for coming on to this long video. I think this may have ended up being our second longest video ever uh, in comparison to our first longest video, which is an absolute masterpiece, which you could go and watch if you wanted to after this video. And eventually, we will actually have a four-hour iceberg video coming out soon. If you want to guess who or what it's about in the comment section, you're more than welcome to do so. But also, I want to say my podcast, The Buddies Podcast, exists where I will be discussing this situation in, in like, I say... Uh, 
in a long format, it will be actually shorter than this video. But if you want to hear some more thoughts from myself just in a unscripted, sort of chill, laid-back scenario, please go subscribe to the Buddies Podcast. The podcast won't be out now, but it should be out in the next couple days. So please do that. The links are in the description. But also, please like this video. Because as much as I said that Blair's audience has turned on her, I'm sure there's going to be a few nut jobs in the comment section and people disliking this video. So please do your best to help me out or just help me boost this video in the algorithm because I've been working on it for a very, very long time. Comment beans, comment your opinions, get the algorithm boost in this video. And yeah, thanks for coming along. Social media is in the description. And uh, uh, yeah, that's everything. Peace out. Have a lovely week, weekday, whatever day it is. I, I don't really care. See you later. Bye bye. Love you very much. Peace out. I felt very mean saying that. I actually do care. <laughs> Have a lovely week.